The response from Mouseboards goes to 1-1 one, one in a best of five. We do get to see FaZe Clan falter after what looked to be a secure second map for them on their third or its pursuit of those three maps needed. It is a best of five here in Bella Resonance, and I am here to break it down with my analysts. 16-14 in favor of Mouse. How do you make sense of that one? Chad, you're shaking your head. You said it was going to be messy. You said it, we were expecting mistakes. But I really am struggling to comprehend this in the same way Henry was while watching it. After Chris J shot Stiko in the back of the head on Inferno, they lost 27 <laughs> rounds and they only responded with one within that 27. At that point, I was like, well, pack her up, boys, production. I'll help you guys get the cable. I was but, already uh, like yeah, planning yeah. on like how, what do I want to pack? What do I want to pack? It was, I was kind of getting, going through the thought process. Party, pack after party, the the usual, the yeah. usual question. But let's be honest, that's a very impressive comeback. I think both teams had, like, look, <laughs> it goes without saying, both teams had very good tea sides, but that was from staying in control of the economy, right? Yeah. You get to the tail end of that game and that's where the big blunders come in from phase sure they had that lost bonus streak slowly building towards the very dire moments of that match and they went with the force by with the cz's and armor that's all they could really get and scrap together if they had taken a save there they would have been able to get another gun around on the board their lost bonus even if that one that would have been maxing out at that point and they could have continued to have you know famuses with a little bit of utility maybe the m4 just with armor but it still would have been better by than sure. that cz force which just felt very strange in that game and you a misstep from carrigan for sure I, I, I can paint it in another light because I, I actually think FaZe is pretty lucky overall to have even been in this game down the stretch. If you just look at this one stat, which is a critical stat on pretty much every map, but especially on something like Cash, Mouse Sports had won 24 opening duels in that map. Like, they, they was 24 to 6 in opening fights. That's an incredible advantage to have, especially when you consider the economic decision sure. late in the game, but just economic struggles throughout that second half for FaZe overall. And they got bailed out in the first half by a lot of these clutches we're seeing now. Nico had a really good performance. Guardian and him won that, what, two versus versus three or two versus four in open space. Chris J as well wins a one versus three. So you're seeing a lot of miscommunication, a lot of disconnect on the retakes for both of these teams, which shouldn't be too surprising considering the stand-in factor. That's that's where most of these kind of issues come into play. And while we're on the conversation and talking about Nico, why don't we go ahead and get, uh, hear from him. He's going to be on the back of what was a surprising loss here at the analyst desk. We do have him standing by with Trace though. Thank you very much, Alex. Yes, I am standing here with Nico, and you know, I really kind of have to ask. That was a rough one. Looked like it was going your way. What happened, man? Yeah, I think we've been up 11-0, then we kind of maybe relaxed a bit, and then they started coming back. As soon as we lost the pistol on the CT, we kind of knew that we have to step up, and uh, we kind of did, and then we, then we lost this one on three clutch against Chris J, which like kind of dragged us down. And uh, they played good, and we played a bit worse than the, in first half, and that's the result. I mean, is it, is it extremely draining on you guys? I mean, it, coming back from such a deficit? Uh, no, we, we're just going to reset and uh, we are going to go into the next map just like we did at the start of the cash. So one question on my mind, and I'm sure the analysts have the same one here. 13-14, uh, you guys force up. Talk to me about the decision making. Yeah, I called the timeout that round. And that was my call to force because the two, pr the two previous rounds, they survived with one guy. And uh, I kind of felt like if we, if we win that round, they have zero cash. So that's why I wanted to force. And I told the guys, like, we can force. And if we win, we are going to win the game 100%. And if we lose that first buy, we're going to still have the buy on their match point of 15-14. So that was my reason behind buying that round. Makes sense to me. The math checks out. Look, man, we're going to get away from cash. Put it in the books. Let's talk about train. Yeah, train looked uh, like a really good map for Mouse for this event. Uh, but I think that we have one of the strongest city sides, and we are ready to take them on on this map. Well, I'm going to let you get to it, man. Good luck, best wishes, and happy hunting. Alex, let's go to train. That's the plan. Thank you so much. Stunner there with Nico, just giving us a couple of moments of his time. Uh, Jason, what do you make of his explanation on that buy? You were actually just both talking about it. He's giving you a bit more of his perspective. What do you make of it now? No, I mean, it, it makes sense, right? I think the, the, the scary thing from our point of view is that that juncture in the game, if you don't win that, then all of a sudden you're giving them the chance. Then you're, fighting, then you're fighting for overtime, right? Um, and that's that's kind of where it's worrying. But obviously that, that logic works out, and we've seen it fly out a number of times, yeah. and it's one of those decisions where if you get it wrong the way they did, you're going to get criticized. And if it, if it goes right, then fair play. Yeah, I mean, nicely done. We'll probably still criticize and question the decision making, but give you some props as well. What's wrong, Chad? Well, it's just a risk either way, right? Yes. So you're kind of doomed if you do, doomed if you don't kind of situation. But like, I think we're just witnessing, you know, high level fundamentals sprinkled, you know, with a little bit of chaos and then topped off with the world-class plays, the clutches that we're seeing, right? So and it was Guardian? No, who was it for map one? That was Chris J with the 1v1. 
What was the influential round? In, in it was Chris Jay losing the 1v1 to Kerrigan. That was it? Yeah. Yep. Uh, we had a bigger clutch than that. Well, he TK'd in the, in, in the back. Oh, he TK'd, thank and you. And that's so where everything right. kind and of And everything fell just fell apart from our sports. And then we had Chris Jay win a one on three here on cash, and FaZe fall apart and dilapidated. We have to mention as well that one of the biggest influential players that Mouse Sports had in that, because he doesn't get enough attention sometimes, is, and I want to give him the shout out, is Stiko. For a yeah. large portion of that game, he was the best performing player on Mouse Sports when none of the other stars were kind of stepping up to the plate. He was the one who just kind of barely held him above water. And then it's when Chris Jay took over, then when Rops kind of clicked in as right. well. You need your players who are sometimes a little bit more quiet, the more passive, the more supportive, the less statistical players. Every once in a while, they're going to have to step up and do something like that. And Zico really, really delivered for the game. I was today. very surprised and, of course, pleasantly surprised when I looked at the scoreboard. I think it was halfway through the game and I could see 22 next to Sticko's name. Ends on 24. And he really did kind of keep the keep the, the mouse spot side grounded. You can see it's not necessarily always with the best weaponry either. Yeah, look, he's normally the support player for this team when Oscar's within the roster, right? He's doing a lot of the grunt work, throwing a lot of flashes, playing a lot of the undesirable positions. Now that Jordan's there and roles have kind of been shifted and it, look, sure. it's more like a pug environment. Let's be honest, they're calling on the fly. They're doing a lot of things just from the few days practice. Everybody is going to have opportunities to find more frags because you're playing in a different kind of environment. You're playing in different positions where, look, different things can happen. Yeah, and different things did happen. Now, I'm looking at the Mouse Sports train that Nico's talking about. We, of course, we saw it versus SK. It was a 16-12. I was just trying to get my, it three times. my head around it. Yep. This is the most played map you were telling us yeah. about in the pre-match for <laughs> Mouse Sports. Out of their six games coming into this series, this is the most played. Right? Yeah. So three times, and they've so, really good on So with that said, Nico's also praising their CT side. It's going to be interesting to see how they intersect. So with Chromen as well, just so everybody can you know put a bit of context in this, they've only played this map once at ECS against Australis, and they lost, lost there are four players that have played it as a team Exactly, before. right? So but it, it, it becomes very difficult when you have to look at the context. But if you look at this team and how Croman's going to fit into it, Seriously, get that dude in smoke? Yo! Oh, oh, oh my! <laughs> Game, record, and stream without compromise. An Intel Core i7. since the beginning. Every map, every frag, every moment. I run, but I never hide. With knowledge comes power, and power is to be wielded wisely. Which is why, as the expert, I bet with Betway. If you know CSGO, then you'll know the best way to bet on esports is with Betway, for the love of the game.
ESL1 Belo Horizonte is brought to you in part by Intel, Alienware, DHL, Logitech G, Betway, and PaySafe Card. Change things up, we'll get things rolling. We go to train. It's phase and mouse. It's map three in a one-one series. The horn sounds, and phase clan will start out on defense first. This is the map mouse played the most in this tournament. Three games on it with nothing. So oh, they'll yes. be first, but phase clan are pretty good on it as well. Should be an excellent game here. Third map with the best of five. T side starts and utility already deployed by Mouse Sport. That smoke towards Ivy. Sego gets Nico from his teammates and he needs to find headshots here. They really did drop the ball on that last game. 11 0 lead and it fell apart. Guardian to open things up here as the bomb gets ever closer towards the site. Chris J in response and Guardian keeps on finding headshots. Chris still looking for more. Did get rain. It's going to swing out and hold off Z Connector. They need to buy some space to get the bomb down. Drive by shooting. Chris does the damage. Stiko slams it home, alley oop style. Guardian comes back in though, he gets tagged up. They still know they're on the train. They still know where they are, but they have to win the fight. And it's on to Chroman. Stand in versus two. The bomb's still not planted because they don't have any information as to his whereabouts. And they may, and smartly, run this to B, expecting that he's got to be in rotation. And if he's not, they'll run directly into him, expecting that they're going to plant on A. He's the inside player as well. So that was a brave call to make, but one that's working out very nicely for them. Chroman has got the smoke and diffuse gear here, but Chris J and Sticker are such a massive advantage. He has zero information as to where they could be. Sticko just needs to get the intel here. Doesn't have to challenge him. I think he might have spotted him there. Maybe not quite. Making some noise now, but now just trying to stay alive. As you can see, running that clock down. But got himself in an awkward position, but not an awkward shot at all. Completely removes Chroman there. He had a fantastic performance on cash, and Sticko continues that good form. Finishing things off with two kills in total. Chris J with three. Great pistol from our sports. Smoke towards the Ivy. It's a very common position for CTs to push on the initial pistol round. Looking for that information. If you smoke it off, it means the player's playing towards that bomb site, maybe towards how it will be segregated from the teammates and Nico. He managed to get some damage inflicted, but not many frags. It was Guardian finding the headshots. It wasn't quite enough. There is going to be a force by here from Guardian again, and Rain looking things up with that CZ. Can he find anything more? Better believe he can. And as he gets two of the CZ, Chris J will answer back from the main entrance, but still four versus three in favor of a force ball phase. Bomb's gonna work over toward the B site. Chroman's still waiting inside of the bomb train. He's got his teammates working that direction now. The AK for Rain becomes a problem with two scouts to soften everybody up. Chroman's done damage as well, Robs. He falls to his death because of that damage. Chroman effectively just got a kill, which now makes it four versus two. And Sticko has to work with Chris, who's gonna bypass bomb entry and go down the lane, but in doing so gets tagged to seven, and it's a great comeback from Chroman. Oh yes, Gooden went out that one versus two, but essentially finds three kills there. Rob's dropping down from up, uh, usually such a promising position for him. Actually leads him to his death, but it was all down to rain at the very start. Ducking and weaving through the E-box, trying to dodge the flashbangs. He gets two frags, funnels him towards inside, and Croman does the rest. Great round from FaZe, good bounce back, but a force by, of course, for a mouse sports hip. Bomb was not planted in the last round. They'll have Deagles, PD-50s, and a CZ. Very little in terms of utility. So difficult to make these rounds work. About a few basic smokes. In terms of their setup, is looking quite default for now. Two towards Pop Dog, one a main entrance, and a couple just holding in T-spawn, maybe waiting to use that single smoke they've got. Sunny has got one of the most deadly Deagles in Europe, so watch out for that. As Rain, be in the open for now. Needs to be careful. CZs and Deagles can remove him very quickly. Sonny wants to work back in from a main with the Deagle in hand. So no bomb plant even in the last round. Having gone down to that force bite. Leaves them with even less of what they could have responded with. If it was a defuse, you might have predicted some AKs to have been brought out as Sonny starts to work. Out of A-Main, he's got fire at his feet. He's going to fall away from it. 
go gets rain at least to start it off in favor in terms of kills in favor of mouse sports as guardian still stays on top of the bomb train deagle in hand deco instead though comes around and finds the shot in the ak he's taking a significant amount of damage in doing so chris he was amazing last map, seemingly wants to do it again this time. He's overstepped the mark, has he? I thought surely Nico would find the angle, just barely gets there in the end. It's nothing the last alive, and no one anymore. 2-1 for FaZe. Well played. Got a bit dicey there with the Deagle pick, so like we said, Mouseports will always be competitive in those sort of rounds. As Nico continues to find Fragship. CZ working out quite nicely for him. Chris J, that wasn't bad at all. Nice little shot there towards the side alley. But now... We presume it'll be the full eco from Mouse Sports here. Just clocks. Not a single dollar invested. Yes, indeed, I can confirm that now. And they'll probably just rush inside, try and trade out one kill and get that bomb down. Inside is the best position to do that. Usually just one player. Guardian, though, is going to be joining Chroman as he goes for the ace. Good for three. And that will be the round. Probably no plan now. That one trade doesn't work out too well if you've already lost three and you're nowhere near the site. Kerrigan still working back up on top of the train, but it's Nico down below at Pop Dog that really becomes a linchpin in the round. If they can get him down, there's a chance they can run it past Kerrigan and try and get a plan. And they go. Flash is perfect. This opens up a possibility because they get an AK and they barely lost any HP. In fact, they're gonna go back. Whoa, Rops got away. Sticko barely does. The nade comes in. Rops loves the upper platform. Will he head there again? It looks like the answer may indeed be yes. AK in hand, Carrigan just trying to lock them in towards inside. He pushes towards our main entrance. Three versus two, going for the boost here, hoping they can find a single player. In transition between the connector, just looking for intel towards that lower ramp. Nothing there yet, but they've still got 40 seconds. Might as well see if it yields any sort of success. They do get that kill, it's a real chance they can win the round. So Rops will be willing to wait maybe another 15 seconds here just to see what's available to him. We'll go down now, 30 seconds at this point. They have got oh, an almost nothing. I thought it was almost a flashbang available, but it's not quite. And they'll be smoked off. That pretty much means the round is not winnable now. You see the look on Sticko's face. Pretty much confirms it. Rain was placed in front of the smoke. Nice positioning. Well read. Closed it out officially there. That was the full eco, though. So two kills coming in. Still pretty good, all things considered. Now Sports is taking money out of the pockets of phase there. Double orb set up for the first time now. 3 1. It's 3-1, we're on round five, and there's three players that still don't have any kills on Mouse Sports' side. That said, they have ten kills. Chris with six and Sitko with four. Nobody else has gotten any. It's a bit of an odd one when you see the scoreboard. And the reason I was looking at that is just to mention something that Peter from HLTV brought up. We've yet to have our stars lead the way. Kerrigan top fragged in the first map. Sticko did in the second. That's kind of funny, isn't it? Well, there we go. I mean, it's always going to be a weird game. Remember, we've got stand-ins on either side. And the map pool is obviously going to be affected in a best of five. Play maps are not necessarily comfortable with or played a lot with with the stand in. So some anomalies are, are bound to take place. <clears throat> Round five here. AKs are out. No all for Chris J. Been such a fantastic weapon for him so far. Get a little in the hands of Carrigan. Might as well use it. It's the weaker rifle on the T side. It's 2,000 bucks, but still used in the right hands. Can be very effective. As the shots come through from Guardian, just firing off towards the pop dog here. On on top in towards Ivy. Carrigan responds with an incendiary. And that will push Chris J back towards main entrance by the looks of things. Guardian still jumping around back toward the old bomb. As Nico comes around. <laughs> Preemptive shots toward a main. It looked like he was firing at his teammate. It was actually at the wall. Speaking of teammates though, nothing taking down Kerrigan. I don't know why that's related to teammates, but it's a kill for nothing. <laughs> No sports with the early lead in the round. I say early, there's only 36 seconds left, but they have a five versus four to work with, and inside of the Brown Halls, they'll start to gather. Chroman again, the only one inside of the site. Nothing's going to lurk late. Watch for him to rotate back tracks when they start to converge and shut down, or try and shut down the B site, I should say, because Sticko's already pushed up. He's playing an incredibly good series. Yeah, he really is. Nice play. As soon as you get the opening the inside site, you can't just rest on your laurels and sit by the bomb site. You want to push down. Get stuck in towards CT spawn and that connector, the upper ramp, and stop anyone rotating in from inside. That's perfect from Sticko. He knew what he had to do. He had time to make those plays, hit the first kill on Croman, and then completely shuts down Nico at that secondary AWP. No choice but to save now. As FaZe will hold on to AWP and an AK-47 for rain. Definitely valuable at this point.
Guardian still trying to hold off in spawn. AWP. Oh, he's, done. he's absolutely done for. Sonny finds the kill instead. And just rain to survive makes it now two rounds from our sports and a lot of guns gone. Not a lot of money to force around with. Kerrigan has enough. He'll bring out the AWP. The rest are going to be limited to M4s or SMGs if they want utility. Indeed. Our sports, though, won the pistol, lost three. Next gun round is theirs. CZ for Carrigan, MP9 for Croman. You see, but a selfless in game leader, Carrigan, making sure his star players have the weapons they need. Chris J, though, takes it out the A entrance, but goes down. Rain was ready and waiting, and a missed shot is all he needs to capitalize upon. Early pick, and they might be able to recover that orb, but nothing will try and deny that prospect. Flash is going in, and Carrigan surely wants it, but they know they have to be patient here. They can't just run blindly in towards the entrance and try and seal the weapon away. If nothing could somehow grab it and juggle it back, that'd be great, but you can see it just looks so difficult to do that. Good smoke, though. Is that the play he's going to make? Indeed it is. Get rid of it. So behind the E-Box, Nico has to play off of Rain. Well, back out toward Ivy, it's Sunny. They'll take down Kerrigan again, so that pulls back to a four versus four with Chris's absence. It's nothing that's on the AWP. Sticko, smoke. Start of the fade perhaps sooner than Nico would have expected. Gets called off by it, and Rain strikes back, but it's Rops. It's all over the map. It's every side, it's every facet. But it is the kill advantage to Mouse Sports. Certainly is. Sunny's coming in with the long rotation with the bomb. It'll take him a whole minute to get there by Guardian. You can see the incandescence of the flames that is blocking his vision. As he looks for the next pick, surely Sticko will offer himself up. And he'd be extremely careful here, but maybe he's ready to fight. This guy is playing out of his mind right now. It's one of the best Sticker performances we've seen in some time. Amazing scenes from him. Two frags in the round, top fragging again on eight kills. And now Rain, surely no chance as Ross finishes things off. That should be the money gone now. That was a difficult round for FaZe with the MP9, the CZ. Mouse Sports, I think it's safe to say, stole cash away. 11-0 down, and they come back to win it. That's insane. Yes, unbelievable. And it's, it, it, it changes everything in this series because it was them that fell apart on Inferno. We mentioned it enough times. But that was FaZe running away, which normally when they get that chance, they do go all the way to the finish line. And yeah. it was mentally exhausting for Mouse Sports. They managed to pull it off, and now it's a completely opposite story. Indeed. Polico pretty much for FaZe here. I think they got one P250 in the hands of Rain. That's about it. He'll be the one to push him towards main entrance. Not wasting any time at all, is he? Trying to get through towards T-Spawn. Made a lot of noise. I'm pretty sure they would have heard him. Indeed, they did. Chris J with Sonny. Seeing if he commits as his teammates get towards inside. Kroger won't really have much to say about this one. I take it back. He does get a nice kill, but that should be it. Rocks will take him down. Decent attempt there by Carrigan. Even better with Nico's USB kill. Still a slight chance here for FaZe, but you feel like this orb shot's going to connect the next time Chris J fires. Gives the bomb up and lets them out. Sonny's still trying to spot, gets dinked up. Nico with a very, very slight chance to win this now as Rain is gone and he's only got the pistol. I would say the chance is non-existent. He'll get found and taken down by Chris. Most sports pull back the lead, we go four to three. Four to three. And there is enough to buy again on the face side. Guardian gets that all out, but this is getting worrying now. Mass balls and the T side looking comfortable. Chris J hitting some wonderful shots with that AWP as well. Guardian still top bragging on six for FaZe. Chris J on eight now, joins Sticko in that department. There you go. You can see on your screens right now. You don't need me to tell you. Round eight, and in terms of the compromises for FaZe, only one kit. Guardian, no utility whatsoever. It's pretty bare bones in that department all across the board, really. Sunny will flash out. After Molotoving behind the blue train, Nico on top of green as Robs does great work, always from that upper ramp. And Guardian, he'll be taken down. That was great from Chris J. Knowing he just fired a shot, he's got a split second to get in position and catch him on the bounce. Four to three, and Chris J just doesn't seem to want to miss today. Kerrigan, meanwhile, has pushed all the way back to spawn. He's got no choice. He may even just be trying to get out at this point in time. He's holding choke points. Bomb has been planted for quite some time. It's Nico that's 
be found first, and Sunny, great response, considering Nico fired the shot early. He gets away with the kill, 25 HP, and if Kerrigan goes down, we're going to be hitting the fourth round loss bonus. That's about all the money they're going to have, so 2,900 just above, maybe into, I think, yeah, 3050 will be the most, and that's going to be for rain. So they're going to have to sit back with pistols. They can half buy, if you will. You are absolutely right. Loss bonus racking up. They can definitely get some pistols out, but this is looking quite worrying completely now for FaZe. We'll see what they can do. CZ's armor. Chris J, like I said, as soon as Guardian took that first shot on Robs, Chris J pounces at the opportunity to find kills with the orb. He's looking at the sharpest orb on the server right now in the last few rounds. Can he continue with though? Can he hold Guardian at bay? DD50 CZs, no armor or nades. I'm surprised at that, to be honest. I thought they would maybe invest a little bit more, but I guess they are on the CT side. They've got about $2,500 per player. They get 34 each in the next round. So just PD50 to CZs, but the kills ringing true for Mouse Sports as they open things up with now three. Stick it on to Kerrigan. Chroman and Rain are the two we sit and wait for at this point, really. Because this round looking very likely to be a sixth for Mouse Sports. Sticko will jump across at Z Connector, still searching out B site. Rain's made a little bit of noise, gets closer to him, and Sticko is able to use his ears to find the angle and get the shot and turn. It's Chroman. Not really much he can do with this one. Waits above the Pop Dog. No reason to chase him. You know they haven't saved any weapons, they haven't found a kill. At best, he's got a CZ. You've got the AK to lose and potentially give up to him. So, no reason to even go hunting. Just make sure you all survive at this point. Use the buddy system. Hold hands, drops, you're not listening. You're the youngest one, you need, a, you need an adult with you. <laughs> but luckily they take Never the go home alone, nothing, yeah, gets it back. Well, there it is. I assume the double orbs will come out again for FaZe here. Indeed, they do, Guardian and Nico once again. Carrigan one and seven, Nico four and eight. It can be difficult to find the mental fortitude to come back from that crushing defeat. To be fair, Nico did a little interview after that. Second map. I'm surprised he would. I thought he'd be storming off outside, but he seemed quite calm. So maybe they're, they're fine. It's just a very good game for Mouseport so far. We've got five rounds in a row on the T side. And now, important round here. FaZe really needs to start waking up. Managed to win the second round force by, but haven't really posted much in terms of actual gun rounds. Here we go then. If you're not aware, it's a best of five currently splitting one map apiece, and this is looking likely to be an inside execute. I'm looking at Guardian's POV right now. He's reading it quite well. He's actually rotating in towards the connector, backing up Croman, knowing this is a possibility. Maybe aware of some of the tendencies of Mouse Sports, but all five players here, they will commit as the flashbangs and smokes come through, and Croman needs to be careful as he eats the flash. Flash off, Croman has to hold. He's got out from behind this pool. They've already gone five, but he's got the bomb. That's the one you'd want. If you could only have one, that's the one you need because it's going to pull them back. It certainly segregates the take. In the smoke, though, Sonny's gonna hold and Kerrigan firing a, or rather, throwing a Molotov above him. He's perfectly weighted and knows that he's there, gets him wow. as he runs back. Perfectly played as well. And it's Nico left in fourth. Mouse Sports looking for a seventh, seventh, excuse me, straight round. Take that back, excuse me. It was Pistol and then an Nico, so it will be, still be a sixth, but nonetheless impressive. On the T side map, if you get six rounds in a row, you're doing something very, very good indeed. So there we go, the inside execution. A little bit dicey, Chrome got a nice pick, like you said, the bomb going down, but Sonny's play there. We discussed it before. You always want to push down towards those smokes, towards that connector, and the CTs have no choice. If you're smoking that consistently, smoke after smoke, they have to push through eventually if the bomb's planted. Sonny, aware of that, finds the first, spins round, catches Carrigan coming out, and only one player survives for phase. That's the AWP. They can purchase a little bit around that, but 7-3 now. Not a complete disaster just yet. Base and still come back and win the half, but it seems like a tall order at this point. Rain, after such a crazy start, getting those CZ frags, sits on six kills right now, just above Carrigan. Scout coming out for Rain here. I haven't ever seen him really ever use an AWP or a Scout. Let's see what he's got. Certainly one of the most profound aimers we've got in the game. And Nico, same can be said for him as he takes down Stick over close range AWP shot. Rob's trying desperately to find inside of the smoke anyone to fire at. Sonny's gotten rain back. He's been, he's, to be fair, Sonny stepped up late in the second game, or the second portion of the second map. 
but he was slow at the very start of that. So it's good to see him starting to have some very good impact frags, getting on the board and getting his confidence built up. Rops, meanwhile, will take down Nico. It leaves us with a scout, a deagle, a CZ to try and hold off the site at seven to three. Mouse sports are certainly all over A. Guardian's got a bit of smoke, so too does Kerrigan to work with through the smoke. He won't find anything. In fact, he'll find nothing as he gets killed by him in the AK. Rops turning around, nearly gets the shot to Guardian, who desperately wants an AWP. Now, even to run away with that is going to be difficult, but he's quick, and he knows the angle is there. He tries to go for the fight, and Rops says, thank you very much. We'll take that back. Eight to three, indeed. Good to see Rops back. Had a tough series so far, but he looks great here on train. Had some good rounds of cash as well. But this is normally a stomping ground. I really enjoy watching his tee side and train. So confident. He's an old head on young shoulders. Round 12 coming in. AWP for Guardian once more. Nico keeps buying the orb map up. He's top fragging, I guess. It just feels like the double orb setup really hasn't worked out for them at all. Maybe you need a little bit more mobility with the M4 of his. But uh, they'll keep applying the pressure with it. Almost no utility for Guardian again. He's in his one flash. The rest of them though pretty well equipped. They still have the maximum loss bonus, of course, with an eco in the previous. It is a tactical timeout now. Lord knows they need it. That's Chris J on 13 frags with the Tiffany top of the T side. Sticko 10, Rops 10. They're looking like a great unit so far. There's Rops. Finds kill after kill. It might be that inside play again. I can't see them focusing towards the inside halls. All five players there. Trying to bully the fact that Croman will be the solo anchor at the start of each round. But Guardian's there once again, but they've got his number as well. Double off, though. We'll see if Nico can make it work. Rops is already cleared to the corner. Croman, you're, you're right, is forced off of it with an M4. So not one of the AWPs to watch the upper side. In fact, Guardian's down below. Nico's aggressive toward A main with his, but it's B that's going to be the attack, and Guardian that's already being forced off position by Smokes, by Molotovs, by pretty much everything, and it's a great entry. A flawless entry as nothing confirms that by taking down Chrome, and they've yet to lose any HP, and the bomb to be planted. Sunny goes aggressive once more. Molotov towards CT connector, and he can hold with the gun toward the door at Z. In fact, he's going to get flashed through, oh! and he somehow turns around to find way no into the pistol. Down goes Nico. What a round, and what a game. Sonny is certainly starting to have as Kerrigan is desperate to do something. It's been a complete shutout. T-side mouse sports, we said this, with nothing. This is the map they've played the most in this event. This is the fourth time they've played it. And it's looking like it's going to be a rather triumphant fourth at this rate. That's so sick. Sonny's making them look like amateurs right now. Pushing that smoke, 180, pistol them. Kerrigan can't get his second frag. You can see the frustration on his camera that he really wasn't having a good time. This was so brilliant. Rain didn't see him coming through, then the P250 punish. Oh, wow, that's so good. So, so good. And it's another eco for FaZe. They're falling apart here on train. Round 13 coming through. CZ's Deagles, that's all they can bring to the table. And the first shot comes in. Chris J, I don't think he's missed many in this particular map. Brilliant performance by him as well. Chris. Sliver he's trying to fire at toward the hitch, but he has to be somewhat cautious of rain. Never mind. No, he doesn't. Stick go apparently has an umbrella for him as he catches him working up the train toward A main, and now he'll start to work out Pop Dog. Kerrigan tapping makes it work, fair enough, but consolation prize for Kerrigan at this point to get his second kill. And that is all because it's now 10 to 3 for Mouse Sports, a nine in a row. Remember, I got that wrong last time. They won the pistol and then lost the eco. If not for that eco and then two rounds in which they didn't have weapons, FaZe could be on zero right now. This is almost the same as cash. They haven't got a single gun round. That's quite a scary prospect. Well, there you have it. It will be double digits on the T side. It's almost a death sentence for FaZe. They'll go for the double ops again, Matt. They, they are being quite stubborn with that. It hasn't posted them a single round victory. You're getting executed on inside every round, and you keep buying double ops. That doesn't make sense to me. It's not adding up. Luckily, though, Nico is at least changing things. This is him going towards up, up. Pays the price of standing in the Molotov. But that's what will happen every single round. Tees will Molotov that, but Robs doesn't anticipate him to come back. Better from Nico, making that double orc more efficient, not just sitting back and getting smoked and executed on, actually finding that first kill. That's actually quite promising now. Chris still holding with the AWP out toward Ivy. He's been very consistent in this series, and 
having in-game leading duties and taking over on the AWP in Oscar's absence. If he continues to play like this throughout the final, if they're able to hoist the trophy, you got to wonder if he's MVP candidate early on. Sonny, Sticko, Rops, they've all had their moments. Op goes back the other way, 1-1 in terms of kills. Still, there's two on the other side to go against in Guardian and Nico, and then the two M4s of Rain and Chroman. But Guardian is looking backwards, if you will. He's opened in the yard, but watching toward Ivy as Rain is tasked instead with holding the top of the wall at A main, and he will get Chris Jade down. He'll straight his angle, but it's Nico that's actually killed him by mistake. Rain at least makes up for it and gets Sticko, but Nico killing Guardian means one of the ops is down, and we're in a two versus two. I think that came from Zeke and Hector when he worked back out. He was trying to get a shot toward the front of the site, and look at Sonny sneaking in behind. Now Nico's gonna feel the pressure, having his mistake haunt them in return. It's Croman, the Scarecrow, who's gotta go back in and find Sonny. Oh, he can but rush nothing, down. Yeah, he can. Four seconds, he has to plant the ball. Nothing's off it. He doesn't have to take the fight, but he's still gonna win it. Well, there we go. First gun round picked up a phase. It really was not pretty. I did say that double orb setup really isn't working for me. Nico blows off the head of his own teammate. He did get the opening frag, so credit worth credit to you. He actually took down his fellow sniper guardian. I didn't see it from his POV. Um, so I'll but I won't give judgment until we see that particular play. Chroma though. Now does nothing there. It was a difficult situation for him, considering he had no chance, but there's a nice play. Guardian tags up Sonny after throwing the grenade. They've got another lead here. 10-5 could be happening. Chris trying to wait out by Ebox, still holding with that AWP as Rain is on the other side of it. He'll start to go, scoped in. Ooh, he's got the aim preset toward Kerrigan, but looked away. Didn't get the aim right when he snapped back, and that gives Nico a chance to take him down. Two misses is too much. And two misses and two men down. It might be around again for FaZe, having finally gotten their fourth. They could get to 10 to 5. It's certainly a workable scoreline. Rops, meanwhile, has gotten Guardian and working up the upper side of the B site. He gets Chroman before being traded. Nothing's gotten Kerrigan, though, but watch outside. Nico down. Nothing's going back for the bomb. A minute to work with, and he's still got his teammate in Sticko to play. Here we go, then. Up to Rain. Two versus one. You have a bit of information as to where they are, but it's almost useless at this point. It's been about 15 seconds. They could be anywhere. He heads towards the pop dog, and they could plant for him here. If the timing works out, which it does, he'll find the first. Takes down nothing. They went for the default plant. It comes back to horn them. Didn't have to rush that. Could have gone for a safe plant, knowing they had no real intel. Pop flash comes out. Rain wants to push forward. The good smoke from Sticko buys him a little bit of time here. Oh my goodness, I didn't think that was going to connect. It's the spray he controls, and they go 11 to 4. What a fantastic half from Mouse Sports there. FaZe just couldn't get it together. One gun round, Matt. That's all they really got. They lost the pistol, won out the second round, force by, negated the force by of Mouse Sports in that next round, and then a full eco. They got one gun round, which was scrappy at best. The interesting aspect of this is that despite so many players staying alive in a number of rounds, the rounds that they have picked up on the mouse, or excuse me, on the face side have been so close that this, the frags are fairly even. 15, 13, 13, 11, 9 on the mouse board side. 10, 8, 8, 8. But then it's Kerrigan with only two. And FaZe Clan now find themselves in a hole and needing a pistol. Remember, they did not win the pistol, they won the eco, so they're proficient with the weapons, but they haven't had the success that they need. Train, T-side, Guardian's got to get going on that op as well. Well, if 11-4 showed us anything. That's true, nothing it, is safe. It can come back at any time, so uh, we'll see. Problem is, it was 11-4 on the T side of train. That normally suggests it's over, but uh, never discount phase in these sort of situations. They are an incredibly good, tenacious team. I'm sure they can find what it takes to get back into this, but maybe Chris J is going to lock the door. Nice headshot from him, but Nico is coming back fast with that clock. Looks like a second frag for him, absolutely. And now it's a three versus four as they head back to inside. Quickly as well. No one there on the CT forces. Quick rotation from Sticko. I don't think he'll be there in time. One man advantage though for FaZe. And to get that bomb plant down, Rain's going to take out Chris J. Sonny and Sticko. One more well off than the other. Sonny's got the armor with the 7 HP. Sticko's got the kit and 100 to work with. He's going to work up Tanker. 
Very narrow alley. As he's on the ledge as well. The small curve that gave him a bit of a headshot angle toward Croman, but he could not connect. Sunny running by, I think, will probably just save the armor at this point. The problem is, with 7 HP, running into anyone is a certain death, and Kerrigan is already on the hunt towards CT, and so too is Croman. They may not find him. He has stayed behind the truck, but I think Kerrigan's going to spot him. He'll check that corner. He knows he's got to check it. Oh, I say that. Surely I thought he was going to check into it. Either way, they'll get him down. So no armor saved over, and FaZe do get their fifth. Carrigan's having a rough time out there. Two and 14. And he's hoping to pick up the last spray, give him a bit of confidence, but goes down. Cost him some cash. The armor taken away from him. He'll go over the UMP in the next round. 11 to 5, just what FaZe needed, though. Surprisingly, Mouse Sports Force buying in the second round. A big advocate for just getting. Upgraded pistols, no armor. Save yourself some cash when you've got leads like this. 5-7 for Rops. We saw him do something remarkable when inside. Early up in the tournament. Four kills with the 5-7. A weapon I'm sure we'll see more of as the months roll by. With the new update coming in. Guardian waits for the lower ramp right now. Round 17. They do have three AKs, one Galil. Only a single SMG here. So, lots of firepower. That means there's a chance it could be offered over. Nothing. PG50 currently holds in the pop dog room. The only player outside. It's a full inside stack here, Matt. And look where FaZe wants to go. It's the inner bomb site. They have not done any investigative work towards the outer area. They could be walking into an absolute disaster here. Roman working out. Does get down the sidewalk undetected. Kerrigan's going to aid in that because he gets a kill above. And Croman therefore goes undetected against Dick. Oh, how do they not see Sonny? Denies the bomb plant. Thankfully, there's 41 seconds left. He was just sitting in the open. They'd all gone by him because he sat inside of the smoke. And now nothing has to rotate over it. Would have been incredible if he found a second kill to go along with that. He does make it awkward. Bomb finally gets planted. And Nico puts nothing in the grave. It's 6 to 11. Certainly is map. Full eco coming through, FaZe have given themselves a fighting chance here. Remember what we said, 11-4, a half on cash. As long as you get the pistol, there's always a chance. Should this be USP here, nothing much else. As FaZe start the long, difficult trip here on the second half. It's Sunny with the Desert Eagle. Just one AG for Sunny. That's all these purchases to throw it in towards main entrance at the start, I guess. And they will, having a little five-man stack outside, I believe, by the connector. They're going to dissipate now. And uh, for now, base plan is holding up a default. Get some basic intel, try and get a pick, holding these choke points, and then capitalize upon it. Guardian. Tanked up already. 42 HP that pistol to go against all of the others. He wants to bring that op out when it matters most. Check with the ladder as well, and Rob's firing at him. He should presume that angle to be from the control room. And Stick-Up's got the first shot. Now it is the man they could afford to sacrifice. That one's not. Rain going down. And these pistols doing massive damage. This could be stolen back. stick has got Roman. Kerrigan's going to try and do damage on the Robs. But it's only one kill, and Sonny sneaks from behind Nico. He's on one HP. He's gotten two kills, and he's got two more to find. So little to work with, but so much talent. Time ticks away to 40 seconds, and the bomb is also down, making his matters much worse. Thankfully, they have still just got the USBs. Again, not that it matters on one HP, but they can't spam. They can't spray away, which means he would be a certain death. He could still one-up them with his aim on the AK. He's checking every single corner right now. So much rise on this round. This was a full eco. He'll go for the reload right now. He doesn't know where they are. He might go for the fake plan here. We'll see. But look at towards Pop Dog. Rob Snows. Rob Snows, and he's got the timing perfect. If Nico had to get the bomb down, you might have had a chance on one HP, but Rob went all the way through B and wrapped back around. What an absolute nightmare. They didn't spend a single dollar there, and a team like FaZe giving up to that sort of weaponry. That is quite woeful, you have to say, but you can't deny the shots coming through. Look at the range, Matt. They're doing such a good job, but where are the smokes? Where's the flashbangs? Why is there vision? Anywhere. You've got to treat these like gun rounds. 
You can't just assume everything's going to be a gimme, you're going to hit this shot. You've still got to drop the basic utility, eradicate some of the risks. And they're going to be kicking themselves that. Sure, you can say Mouse Wars did a great job, which they did. But it's not like you did everything you can to deny them kills. The live betting odds are dead level on Betway. 1.83 on either side, and I think that's fairly representational of this series. Interestingly, winning that with just pistols. It puts Mouse Sports on 12, and forget about the fact that Guardian was saving for the AWP. Thankfully, he saves and gets an AK this time, so there's still a chance for them. Unbelievable. There's four rounds to go for Mouse Sports to turn things back after having Inferno fall apart. Inferno went up in flames, Henry. Yes, it did. Second time I've made you laugh today. Yeah. It takes quite a lot, so congratulations to you. And it will be the fast play towards outside. Faze at least get the opening. Couple of kills here, recovering from that disaster against the full eco. All will be forgiven, and it can make this one work. Sticko fighting back from Ivy's, and such a good job so far. Bombs planted. What's Rob's up to, though? He's in the smoke, taking damage. Looking for that next kill, not going to happen. Good recovery with the AKs carried or rather purchased into this is one of them has gone down, it's Guardian, but they have two still to work with and Sticko only with 23 is trying to save that AWP. So unfortunate that they lost against the USPs in that round, but it's pretty rare as well that the CTs win round three having lost pistol, but they can still take things back in their favor and they'll get the AWP as well. I was gonna say that FaZe now back in black. The crowd's starting to swing a little bit, but it seems they've Got a mixed draw out there. I think it's fairly 50-50 at this point. Yeah, I think you might be right. Mouse Sports uh, seem to have stolen a few hearts, perhaps, with their impressive play. Big rounds coming through. And um, oh, Chris J. Orp. Okay, I was about to say they could probably get the eco here, but they are force buying. I can confirm. AWP for Chris. 3D goes. There, there is no need for this. I, I get what they're doing. Trying to reset the terrorists and leave them with nothing. It's a cool idea. I just don't think in this particular instance it's the smartest one. If you lose the round, you're really swinging the door of opportunity wide open for FaZe, and they're going to capitalize upon that. I'd rather close it out in full gun rounds than going for resets. That's just me. But uh, we'll see whether it works out for him. Chris J, AWP. Can he find the first frag? He's being burned alive right now and flashed out. That's the alley oop right there. But nothing. Still alive and kicking. Can he find the second? He can't, but Sunny will back him up. He needs to recover that orb, but it's just flying all over the place. Sunny picks it up in the end. And now. What has happened there? Did he. I have no idea. I think he got shot. But... I don't know where that damage came from either. I was, I was actually on my own PC, saw it from a different angle, and I still couldn't solve where that came from. Nico gets Tico. It's Rops, though, with the Deagle. He spots one in Nico already. Knew that he was in that direction anyway. Bombs down, Guardian has to go back forward. He's picking Guardian apart. He knows that bomb is in position. How did Guardian not even do any damage? As Rops stays on 100. The problem is exactly that. He needs to find range. That's so with the knife beak. Oh, good God, Estonia. It's on the map, and it's down to Nico. He will at least pick up the bomb. No gun yet for Rops. No armor, no kit but all the time in the world given that the bomb has just gone down and he'll take advantage of that to try and sneak in early. There is a gun and some, I believe the kid is, no, it's just the leg sticking up on the tracks. I was gonna say to his right, but there is an AK that he can certainly take advantage of. Better than that, he's gonna pick up an AWP. He's gonna have to be a one hit wonder. He was certainly with the Deagle in his hands. 10 second defuse, which means he has to pull Nico out of position. Knows he's gone toward old bomb. Tries to set. Nico knows that he's not on it because the shoulder went around the corner. And as he taps again, he's still scoped in. Nico's not going to move. The round is gone. Robs did everything he could, but Nico does just barely enough. Wasn't exactly comfortable, wasn't clean. But the round is on the board, and that was the force by for Mouse Sports. Phase plan can breathe easy in the next. To be fair, they did lose to just USPs before, so I'm not sure why I'm saying that. But still, I don't think they made that same mistake. Use the smokes, boys. Execute properly and make sure you go out eradicating those risks. But what was some brilliant shots there from Rob? Absolutely fantastic stuff. Nothing. Gave it a good go with the CZ as well. That shot definitely made things exciting. Though. The one versus one with Nico. This time he wins it out. Chris J opting to do the CZ armor buy again. He's the author of the team. Takes himself down to... $750. I don't know why he keeps doing this. I really couldn't tell you the logic behind it. 
That's over $1,000 worth of kit there. And he'll only get 2400 in the next round. He's got $700 residual cash. So uh, that, that's quite baffling. His teammates joined him, sure, but I don't think a CZ armor is necessarily going to find you the kills you want. Shot back out from Rain. It's, it, again, it, it echoes of the last two maps and the fact that one team has a good start and it falls apart because this was almost the 11 nothing. It was 11 4 half, same score line. It was three rounds after winning a force buy. No gun rounds. It effectively was almost your 11 nothing start. And it is FaZe that's coming back this time. Talked about this map for Mouse Sports as well. It's, if you want to call it preparation, it's their most prepared map. I would agree with you, Chris J. Now, if he saves that AK, that buy ain't looking too bad. He'll probably able to do so as well. So luckily, he will get away with an AK and armor. Pretty much as good as he was ever going to get with that CZ purchase. So no harm, no foul. So, I don't think they're going to bring out the AWP. They'll take a tactical timeout. Nothing could drop it, but he might be compromising his own armor there. So, does he want to take the AK from Chris and uh, be naked out there? It looks like that's the case. I think nothing just purchased it for him. Either way, he's got it. Nothing still has his cash. So, his uh, Carrigan holding up as soon as he wanted to pull out his pistol or his yeah. flashbang, I'm not sure. That's as soon as nothing comes around the corner. That's my sort of luck in CSGO. As soon as you're holding an angle, as soon as you go to yeah. move, out he comes. Exactly. Yeah, that's pretty horrible timing. So they have got the AWP out. Nothing on the M4. Chris J on the AWP, of course. Gives over the AK to young Rops, who can definitely do some pretty impressive things with it. Chris J battling towards main engines and Guardian's looking confident here. Completely destroys Sticko. I think he spotted the arm on the first peak and knew that he was probably still there. Good response from Chris, but Nico's got nothing before that and Chroman over toward B gets Rops. Molotov goes far. Sunny goes inside of the flames. A lot of damage, but it won't work out for him in the end as he gets found by Chroman returning back inside of the site. It's Chris to wrap back around to try and save the AWP. We've got a 12-10 game phase. Have pulled this back only one round so far for Mouse Sports. In the second half, that is. That's true. Phase are bringing it right back here. Who would have thought on the T side as well? Uh, for now, Chris J holding on to what he can. Chroman with two kills, Guardian. And Nico with the other. Chris holding up now, right up and towards heaven. Just hoping he can keep hold of this. But Chroman, if he checks it, he's absolutely done for. Oh, hello. Uh, he'll take that all the way to the bank. Bomb goes off. Double did it now for phase. Nico, the only player to go down. So looking a lot more comfortable now. Don't think there's enough to buy on the CT side. Chris has got 5k, so he can certainly bring up the AWP in the next round. Probably can get that CZ armor again this time. Pasha watching on from the crowd. Is he there again? He's there. He's a fan of Counter-Strike, flies around the world even when he's not playing. Came from China straight to Brazil. <laughs> straight here just to catch the grand final. Well, Chris Jay's feeling brave, Matt. He's bought the AWP again. This is the Oscar buy for them. So he didn't save this. This has actually been brought up. And what a play this is. He actually got the balls to push the lower round and get towards Pop Dog. You haven't seen anything like it. He'll look towards the T steps, nothing there. He might not get a chance to show us what he's capable of, as they've already completely capitalized towards outside. If he can save the orb, that'll be fine. Let's say he might have to now. It's a nice idea. But overall, he'll just be looking to save it. Nico, though, seems to be one step ahead. Faze seems to be one step ahead. This T side. It's coming alive. It's Chris J again, and it's a one map, or one round game, excuse me. And this will maximize the loss bonus. They've got enough to. Uh, he, yeah, they've got enough to purchase. If he saves the op especially. It's a baffling process that's been displayed here. 11 4 in the first T side, and now it's 7 1 in the second T side. It doesn't really make any sense. But like I said, with stand-ins playing here, a uh, shallow map pool, and a uh, little experience, they haven't really had much practice with nothing especially. 
it's bound to produce some anomalies here and uh, it's normally considered one of the most CT side of maps we have in the pool uh, just beneath Nuke I would say no one in this half for mouse sports has more than five kills Rops and Sonny each have five well there we go and that's ten rounds in pretty much uh, nine I guess at this point on the other side, things are certainly picking up. Kerrigan's still a little behind, but Nico, wait, we said it was going to be sooner or later, the stars would arrive. Nico is on 22 to lead the way. Yeah, you can see him doing everything he can to keep base in this game. He's been in some massive amount of clutch situations here. Won a few of them, finding trade kills wherever he can in that outside area. And he's still believing at this point that one round away from tying things up. It's going to be a long, drawn-out series here in the best of five. No team looking greater than the other. They seem to have spells of greatness, and then it goes horribly flat for a while. Then they come back. It's uh, ever swinging pendulum. As the orb saved over from the previous round, Chris again for that Oscar purchase. With his eco teammates, will be able to save it at least. So at least that money wasn't wasted. Guardian on the AWP as well. Great. Holding up towards inside. That same Molotov, not thrown quite deep enough, was supposed to stop the. Upper ramp or luckily no one was there. And now Carrigan, he's had a really rough game so far. Lucky to be alive there, maybe peeking out a little bit too far, but still, he's absolutely fine. You can see it's a classic fake here. He just shows some presence towards Ivy as his teammates get ready to go towards inner. They'll smoke at the upper ramp just to block a bit of vision there, then drop the flashbangs through that smoke. And this is just Rain continuing the little fake they've got going on here. They're not going to smoke up a contact play. So, Robs will be ready and waiting. Now, look at that crosshair placement. He's ready to go. Good find from Robs. He certainly was ready. Goes back out as well with the flash thrown by his teammate. He's able to get Chrome in. Sonny's down below, and he's got rain. Sun showers. And not enough raindrops, apparently, because it's not really a splash in the bucket, even. As Kerrigan is in a one versus four. Finally, Mouse Sports getting a gun round. Convincingly so far, I say, because it is a reset. If Kerrigan gets kills, he knows what that means. Every kill counts. Kerrigan, 7 and 17. Tried to make the fake happen there. Didn't really pull Rops away at all. And Sonny doesn't look like he's having it either. Kerrigan now just trying to find a kill best he can. Not going to happen. That's the second round in the CT half for Mouse Sports. It's now 7 to 2. We'll see one round number 25 brings. Plenty of cash to the base side, nothing to be worried about just yet. But they know they can reset mouse sports here. But they did keep four players up, so it wouldn't be one of those crazy resets where you get absolutely nothing. They've still got 6k on Chris. His money's been relatively strong for the saving he's been doing. Sunny, 4k right now. Sticker and nothing, both hovering around the 3k mark. And a couple of kits there. They've got the majority of the utility. Sounds like a tactical timeout coming, I can tell you. Called it potentially. Actually, maybe I can't. No one has typed in chat. Yeah, it doesn't say for me who did it. That gives them time to talk things over. Well, either way, it's 30 seconds for the coaches to get stuck in and strategize. Normally more beneficial on the T side here, but certainly can deliver wonders on the CT side as well. You want to throw a spanner in the works right now. You want to send three players to rush in a ramp. You want to push that orb towards Ivy. You know they're taking a pause for a reason. Let's see what Chris J and co have got in mind. Rops alone towards inner. He's playing at the A ramp right now. Rops the smoke and Chris J looking towards main entrance. Nothing too special from what I can see apart from that shot. Nico completely destroys nothing there in rain. Looks to follow it up. Big response from Sonny. Almost a must-win round the way things have gone in this half. They want to keep money. They've got to win it, but Kerrigan's got a better plan. He's got other ideas. He'll take down Sticko. Chris J gets put up on ticket through the Sonny works back in, and Chris, he'll hit the shot on the rain. Kerrigan's going back with the bomb toward A main. They took over sandwich control, but he's not confident working in. And watch Rops. Oh, Rops. He's right behind Guardian. He doesn't know it yet. The smoke was down. He couldn't see him. He was actually in the opening. Guardian's going to burrow his way into hell. But Rops is going to try and go all the way around behind him. They think the bomb's left and gone to B. It hasn't. Certainly has not. They've got the man advantage now, but lacking 
coordination. You can see they're all so separated from each other. One at backtracks, one at Ivy, one pushing the inside ramps. They've got to wait for a little bit at least. I we'll hope Chris J finds a quick pick. Guardian seems to be aware of where they could be. That plan towards Ivy could be absolutely done for here. If not his teammate first, they wait by the backtracks here as Guardian brings out the flashbang. Bomb ticking away, and that frag might secure it. Great Molotov on top of the bomb. They've got nothing to say about this now, surely. Guardian, sure, he's got two men against him, but the bomb's just ticking away so quickly. They might have this match. This is going to be close. Five seconds, I don't think so. Oh, my God, it's all... It's closer than Kerrigan's, and they get away with it. Mouse Sports get 14 and avoid the reset. The two timers at the top almost synchronized, but somehow Mouse get 14 and Guardian... Oh, he knows how close that was. Hey. Remember, it was map one on Furno that Kerrigan got a defuse like that against Chris J. I thought he timed that Molotov to perfection. It seemed like there was no chance, but somehow the only player of the kit was the one closest to the bomb. A strike of genius there from Mouse Sports as the full defuse comes in. 14-11, another tactical timeout. They're really getting to the nitty-gritty now, this grand final. Mental exhaustion starting to set in when the third map still have potential number two to come. There's Chris J. Not at the top in terms of frags, but not far from it. It's Sunny on 21. Top of the scoreboard, Chris J 20, Rob's 20. Great performances from a lot of the players on the server right now. As we'll see, Mouse Sports in touching distance and taking the lead in the series. Train, always such a good map for them. Especially from that young man, Rob's a bit of a specialist on it. Can they find map point again? Chris trying to work behind the flames at Sandwich. She's going to go above instead. He wants vision to aim in. That's his goal no matter what. At any cost. Nothing has to watch over toward his pop dog position as Chris falls off, retreats. And now looks above. Didn't realize that Nico had taken advantage. Still not great money on either side, so another must win round. It's also break point and map point if Mouse Sports can achieve it. They're down two men already. Bomb is planted. Sunny trying to get back in, but smoked and flashed off. They may go for a save call because it's only going to be $1,400 in. Now, that said, Chris J does have 8,100, but nothing is 50. 800 for Sticko. And they may just try and take some weapons down and give this up. I think you might be right. Three players surviving right here. They still have Chris J at 8K, but uh, as you can see, Sticko's low. Nothing with no cash. And then they might just have to save up the weaponry here. That's absolutely fine for Mouse Sports. Sure, the round didn't go in their way, but they still have a 14-12 lead here. They don't want to throw away money, but Rain knows he can take some of it away. Can they hold him off? As he goes sniffing for kills inside, I'll confirm with you. You can see at the top of your screen still. And he found nothing, so three players will be surviving for Mouse Sports. They'll have another buy available. It's coming right down to the wire here. Remember, 11 rounds for Mouse Sports on their T side. Surely able to close this one out, but Faze are hot on their heels. Have a look at the spawn, see if we can see anything interesting. Guardian with the AWP, he's got the best spawn of them all. Will he take the main entrance pick? I think he might do. He's running in. See if he can open things up. Trying to capitalize with it. Smoke down, but he's mainly oh. played himself. It's the MP7 and Chris, a calling card of his, as he finds two kills. The drive-by comes through, and now they have the man advantage. Rops. Pushes the pop though, he knows there's three players pushing main entrance, there's almost no chance of being anyone in this area. Chris did this by design. He has 6,200 left over, goes to the MP7, run and gun, he does. He's been using it all year, and pretty much the only player that does. It's got more run and gun potential than the UMP, more higher fire rate, and you can see it doing great work here, but Rob's surely going down, what a reaction from him! This could be map point for Mouse Sports as Rain desperately tries to get them back in the round. Kerrigan still doing battle with Sticko, but he's left alone because Robs has found Rain. It's Kerrigan inside of the site. Sunny to put him down. 15 rounds for Mouse Sports. Map points and a chance to go up 2-1 in the best of five finals. There is money enough to buy on FaZe's side. Good Lord. What a game this has turned out to be. Full of question marks and excitement. No one knows where it's going, but Chris J seems to have a pretty good idea. Farming that cash with the MP7. Up close and personal, sticks the barrel down their throats, gives them hell. And we could go into the final round here. Money's still there for FaZe, but it's not much. 
You can see they're taking some compromises, not all the utility they would like, but they do have the smokes and the Molotovs. AWP for Guardian here. Chris J this time at the alley, fires off the first shot, but he's baiting in Sticko. This could still work out for them. Smoke back inside of Ivy. Guardian tries to fire into it, hope for the best. It's gonna take a little more than just hopes and dreams. It's gonna take fantastic entries as nothing is also gonna try and deny that by getting in the face of Nico. Smoke down, he might expect that he's there. Yeah, he even backs off to watch the wide side of it. So back, for now at least, to the Brown Halls. 59 seconds. Sonny's below it. Pop Dog Kerrigan's just above with the bomb. Nothing gets positioned with Rops. No indication. Two Brown Halls. One with a boost, or at least was. I think they've just gone off of it. And Chroman and Nico still back toward A main. Bomb is at Pop Dog Mini. It can swing either direction. Three and B, meanwhile, for the defense. And as the Molotovs go over, it's going to be a fake. Guardian backs off. That's going to hold them at the B site. Guardian's still waiting to go down. Pop Dog. They're waiting for a response, hoping that maybe someone will try and rotate on the flank. Nothing starts it off, though. It's all on to Chris. Gets the first. Stays alive. Good HP as well. Knows he has to be efficient because they have sold the fake, and he gets called off by Chrome, and that might allow the plant. It's Sticko instead, though, that's back toward Ivy. Seven seconds, and they're just barely on it. Kerrigan's planting now, and he's done safely so, but he's got to get away, and he's in the open. Gets the first on nothing, not expecting two. Sonny gets it down to Chrome, and the stand-in for FaZe. And Mouseports, they'll get 16-12. They'll get a 2-1 lead, and FaZe are two maps away still from trying to get their third Grand Slam win, and they might get denied by Mouse Sports. Well, there we have it. What a great performance from Mouse. A little bit more difficult than they anticipated in the second half, but you're up against FaZe, having the best aimers in the world. Some absolute blunders there from FaZe. They lost a full Ecos against those USPs. They got 11 forward in the first half. To be fair, a decent comeback in the second, but it didn't feel like they were ever going to be able to close it out. So there it is. Mouse Sports will take the lead in the series now. Two to one with the nothing standing. And FaZe need to ask themselves what's going to happen in the next map here. It's so back and forth this game after a crushing defeat on Cash after being 11-0 up. Do they have what it takes to really win out this grand final? Well, we'll find out on Mirage. Mouse Sports 2-1. Comebacks not only in the map, map number two, but in the series overall. We're going to take a break. We'll be back.